Good evening. Tonight it is my pick, and I chose him 345, In the Cross of Christ I Glory. We'll sing verses 1 and 4 of that particular hymn. Verses 1 and 4 of hymn 345. In the cross of Christ I glory, towering o'er the wrecks of time, all the light of sacred story gathers round its head sublime. And blessing, pain, and pleasure, by the cross are sanctified. Peace is there and knows no measure, joys that through all time abide. Sang verse four a little wrong there. That's all right. Sorry. Oh, I did it. <laughs> That's all right. Um, all right, we are in Romans chapter 3 tonight. Romans chapter 3, as it talks about God's faithfulness, we'll read verses 1 through 8 of that particular hymn. What advantage, then, is there in being a Jew? Or what value is there in circumcision? Much in every way. First of all, they have been entrusted with the very words of God. What if some did not have faith? Will their lack of faith nullify God's faithfulness? Not at all. Let God be true, and every man a liar, as it is written, so that you may be proved right when you speak, and prevail when you judge. But if our righteousness brings out God's righteousness more clearly, what shall we... But if our unrighteousness brings out God's righteousness more clearly, what shall we say? That God is unjust in bringing his wrath on us? I am using a human argument. Certainly not. If that were so, how could God judge the world? Someone might argue, if my falsehood enhances God's trustfulness or truthfulness and so increases his glory, why am I still condemned as a sinner? Why not say, as we are being slanderously reported as saying, and as some claim that we say, let us do evil, that good may result. Their condemnation is deserved. It's all talking about here. Caitlin. Uh, Paul says that at the beginning he asked that there's an advantage to being Jew or circumcised, and he said that really the only thing was that they were given God's word. Okay. Um, he says, is there an advantage to being a Jew or being the circumcised? Uh, just the advantage in that they had God's word from their birth, right? Um, they've had it that whole time. And so, of course, he says, right, there's an advantage there given to them because they have had this precious word of God for longer, than the Gentile Christians have, right? Um, but, does that mean they're more saved? No. Does it mean they're better? No. Okay? Um, doesn't mean any of that. And then people will say, well, wait, if none of that matters, then, then why not just be a sinner all the more? and live my whole life here in this world like a sinner and do anything and everything that I want to do and then at the very end right before I die just kind of sort of say well, okay just kidding I believe in Jesus and then I got to have all the fun that I wanted to here in this world and I'm still gonna go to heaven Caitlin because that's like expecting good to come from evil. Okay. <laughs> it's expecting good to come from evil? 
as well? Okay. What does Paul say about that kind of thinking at the end? Caleb. People like that deserve their condemnation. Their condemnation is deserved. That's pretty strong language. Right? Pretty strong language. Part of what Isabel said is part of the answer to that. Right? I don't know when I'm going to die. I might think I do. But there's no telling. Right? The car battery died in, a, in the Explorer, and so I hopped in that today, and I went driving around. I didn't know. Maybe maybe somebody was going to be driving crazy and, and hit me, and that would have been the end. Right? It wasn't. I'm here yet. But I don't know. There's a danger in thinking that I do know, right, when my time is going to come. There's a danger there. Any other things that you see wrong with that kind of thinking? Caleb? You're not really sorry for your sin. Yeah. So there's not really a repentance there, right? Am I thinking like a Christian? No. Christians don't think like that. Am I thinking like somebody who knows that God knows what's best for me? No. In fact, I'm kind of thinking the exact opposite of that, right? I'm kind of saying God's a fool and I can do whatever I want. I know better, and in the end, I'll try to play the system. Is God a fool? No. Can I play the system? No. Danger, danger, danger. Um, and so theologians have often said, don't try to program the Holy Spirit, right? Ultimately, faith is a work, not of my own, but of God's. It's his gift. And so when we play with that, that's a dangerous thing. And that's what the Apostle Paul is saying here. Right? Is having the word around you your whole life long a wonderful thing? Yeah, God be praised. Right? I am very happy that I grew up in a house that had believers in it. And that grandma and grandpa are believers. Right? And that they shared the word with me from little on. What a blessing. Right? What a blessing. And hopefully one day you guys said the same thing. So what a blessing. Doesn't make me better. Doesn't make me more righteous. Doesn't make me better off in God's eyes. But what a blessing. And may I never tamper with those blessings that God has given me or treat them like a bad thing. Or like Paul says here, right? my condemnation just might be deserved. Right? Anything else in this section? No? All right. Then let's pray. Dear Jesus, please help Caitlin, Caleb, Izzy, Marcus, Mommy, Daddy, and all we know and love have a good night's sleep. Help them to fall asleep and sleep all the way through the night and wake up happy and healthy. In your name we pray. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Have a great night. God bless.